courtesy of the cut this is an article called a vibe shit is coming will any of us survive it and all in all it's basically what i've been talking about at the start of the show in terms of trying to understand understand and anticipate whether or not whatever vibe we had pre-pandemic will ever come back again for the most part it won't for the most part let's just kind of call a spade a spade whatever vibe that will be restored that that will kind of come back into prominence will be a different sort of vibe um i think it's going to be a vibe that is kind of is somewhat um is somewhat how would you say it's somewhat determined on the people who are around i feel like for the most part in terms of nightlife going out hospitality scene i've definitely seen a decrease in people out and about i've definitely seen a changing of the guard in terms of who is about and doing the doing the thing and who's the movers and shakers and whatnot that are out there i've seen a lot of people move on to other things in terms of their life and what they want to do so clearly that's going to impact the vibe and whatnot and i think overall my overall kind of conclusion on these sort of things is i feel like the obviously the pandemic has kind of aged us all aggressively i feel like we've all aged more in the last two years than we have done maybe in the last five but i also think that you should embrace it and i also think if you are somebody who's kind of maybe decided to go a different direction in your life in terms of you know maybe pulling away from the scene and pulling away from all that sort of debauchery and going out and all that sort of stuff i think you should embrace it and just live with the reality that your time has come and gone it's completely okay and i think this article from what i can ascertain from it um it feels like a writer or a person who hasn't kind of come to the realization or the acceptance that their time has been and gone and whatever vibe that did exist pre-pandemic is not going to be there again post because the people have changed circumstances have changed and life has just moved on it just is what it is but let's just quickly read the article and then i'll kind of continue on it says one morning in june while i was puffing away on my stationary bike firing a peloton pretending i had enough time to get my body ready for the hot slack summer that never really was my friend ella messaged me okay please let me know if this person is dumb but this person does what this stressed me out this morning she dropped a link to something called vibe shift an entry from the subset called eight ball which turned out to be a weekly newsletter of a trend forecasting consultancy by sean M M M mononen Mononen, Mon Mon Monona. How do you say that name? How, why can't I say that? Sean Monahan. Um, previously, Monahan, um, Monahan, right? Yeah, had helped to found the now defunct art collective KHO, known for their giving a name to 2010 phenomenon of Lawn Core and succinctly explaining why all the um all of a sudden everyone was wearing New Balance sneakers and dad jeans. In other words, he's someone who has made a career of translating cultural trends for a large audience. A vibe shit is a catchy but sort of too cool for term um for Monaghan use it for a relatively simple idea. In the culture, sometimes things change, and once dominant social wavelength starts to feel dated, Monahan, who's 35, breaks down the free vibe shift um, he has survived as observed. He has survived and observed the following hipster slash indie music circa 2003 to 2009 or peak arcade fire block party high waisted cheap mondays williamsburg bespoke cocktail bars post internet techno yeah which i was there for i actually remember that was the that hipster indie music era of 2003 and 2009 was actually the first time i went to new york with my group of friends that i was um close to back then um that was our first sort of like lads holiday too which is a crazy lads holiday to go to right especially if being a, a a british guy usually your lads holidays are somewhere outside of london or whatever town you're from or they're in europe somewhere mostly portugal spain italy france those kind of neighboring countries right that's usually where you go you don't usually get on a 10-hour flight on a virgin to new york as your first boys holiday but i can't complain it was absolutely banging um and then post-internet techno revival which was circa 2010-2016 or the blood orange era norm core dressing like the matrix kim folk at the club not kim for the magazine exactly i remember that era again i remember seeing that was the area i actually saw blood orange for the first time live and i think that might have been in the alibi actually dev Hines's new moniker that might be the other by i saw him live performing for the first time and then the last um uh the last trend he saw was hype beast work which was 2016 to 2020 which was drake at his drakeist the nike sneakers app sneaker flipping virtue signaling donald Trump and protests not brunch 
You can argue that the accuracy of Monaghan's timeline or spend hours over dinner litigating the touch points of each vibe era is kind of fun debating which trends are peaking and which are just um, for white people. But the thing that struck fear into Ellen's heart was Monaghan's prediction that we were on the cusp of a new vibe shift. It is unnerving because when you really consider it, you can feel people flock into a new thing. You can see that it's right something has shifted none of this would have practically be distressing it's just how time moves on if not for this paragraph explaining what the flocking looks like one day everyone was wearing red wing boots partying in warehouses in williamsburg decorated with twilight with twinkling very lights vibe shift everyone started wearing new nike freeze and sweating out in the club now some did not make it through the vibe shift why are you all wearing the same sneakers they would plead don't you care about authenticity that's with all the sudden interest in the branding this to say not everyone survives a vibe shift the ones still clinging on for authenticity fairy lights and the ones who crystallize in their hips of them while the culture moved on they bunkered down in greenpoint and got married or took their wax beards and their nautical tattoos and sleeves and relocated to hudson by and by that law those who survived this shift only to get stuck in say high beast work well but they already moved to Los Angeles to houses that have room to display their sneaker collections worth a small fortune. Unfortunately, I ate this social analysis up like a big ass spoon. Sorry, a big ass spoon. It's chilling to realize that you may be on the you may be you may be the one of of the stuck, or if you aren't, you may be soon. Like Ellen, I've totally stopped thinking about my own survival odds since. I've never actually thought about it that way. In my opinion, I've kind of always thought. I've always kind of had the perspective of enjoying whatever era or phase I was in in that given time. Maybe it comes from the fact that I was never really allowed to do stuff when I was younger or living at home. So the fact that I was able to move out and do my own thing, I don't take it for granted. I kind of enjoy and savor each moment and just kind of try and live with it and enjoy it for the best I can. And whatever next phase comes, it's probably going to be my best best phase because I'll be able to make more money, I'm more smarter, I've got better friends, I've learned more things, I'm more worldly, you know, all those sort of things. I would imagine that would be the case. Um, but I guess for some people, if you're kind of eternally obsessed with remaining the coolest and the hippest and part of the zeitgeist, you're constantly going to be chasing the dragon. And I feel like the moment you let go of that stuff usually is when you become your coolest, especially I feel like anyway, the person that kind of pretends and kind of acts like it and chases it too much is never the coolest. They're usually the lamest person in the room, the one that's sort of laid back and kind of allowing life to kind of well, not say come at them, but sort of like taking it in a stride. Usually to me are the coolest people that exist out there. And I think for the most part, the sooner you're able to realize that and let go, the better. And I've kind of adopted this thing, especially when I go to these kind of newer, trendier, cooler parties with young kids. I tend to kind of like if if it's kind of like in a physical manifestation way, I tend to kind of always hang out on the outskirts of the club so i won't be in the middle i won't be in the front i'll just be over to the side do my own thing because again when i go to these places i'm not going to apart from maybe making the odd instagram friend here and there i'm not going to hook up i'm not going to do anything crazy i'm just going to go and enjoy the music so i basically stand on the side enjoy myself have my drink do my thing if i want to take a bump i go in the toilet i do my whatever i need to do but i don't allow the situation i don't allow the fact that i'm seeing so many cool amazing hot young people around me to maybe feel bad about myself i just accept that this is their time and i'm basically a guest in their space they're allowing me to share their space with them and the last thing i want to do is be the old cokey guy in the corner trying to get cool and down with the kids because it's going to look off because i'm clearly not one of the kids and the sooner the, the sooner i realize that the more fun i was able to have don't get me wrong i've always had a good time when i go out I'm somebody that can clearly, you know, entertain himself, but I feel like that kind of acceptance that my time in that way, in terms of that being the, the zenith of the coolest, has been and gone cool. But it's also one of the most important times of my life because it allowed me to be the person I am now. Without it, I wouldn't be here now. So I don't really see it as a bad thing personally. And for the most part, this article keeps rambling on about being what is me in that regard. We'll go to the bottom in terms of the last paragraph. Um it says here, duh, 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 uh, yes, it's here. Um, um, I decided to poll my friends about what they're doing, mostly the ones without kids. Do they think that they will emerge on the other side of all this as adults in terms of the pandemic who just accept uh, we lost our last few years of social sexual freedom or will they let themselves get stuck? I'm writing about a vibe shift I wrote in a text to one friend broaching the topic. 
are they good or bad i can't keep up he replies he also doesn't really care and he just got engaged and has really gone and has, and has been and is, sorry and has been going on vacations and calls himself vibe optimistic he changes for no vibe which is something that i will definitely prescribe to it continues is this about babies do you want to have a baby asks another friend of mine who just had a baby and wants company and refuses to understand that this is about vibes i could just opt out but here's a glimpse of what awaits me if I survive. Late last summer, Monaghan was in LA hanging out with this kind of trendy wine bar called El Prado, where he observed a 21-year-old woman wearing rocket dogs, as in platform shoes with low-rise boot-cut trilogy jeans. He noticed how she had a little back lever under the arm purse and a cami and a trucker hat. It was as though she had a time-traveled from early aughts Kitson. We watched as she started talking as an older hips to an older hipster dude. He was trying to explain to her what a mosh pit was and my friend was just kind of cracking up about this weird intergenerational conversation happening when we were like this girl looks like she just shifted from i don't know 2008 to this bar and that taking uh, talking to a guy who looks like he's never updated his style since 2008 and he's trying to give her a more of a pov on the crowd surfing of a hardcore show and all monahan says laughing incredulously and I think that to me is the saddest part of it, like trying to compete and trying to still be in there, like being that guy trying to hook up with that girl that looks like she's from 2008. It doesn't make any sense. Play with your age mates. Obviously, keep yourself fresh by kind of, you know, making sure you're aware of what's going on out there and dipping your toes in here and there and checking things out. But this constant need to be the coolest person in the room as you progress in your age or in life in general with your experiences is lame as hell i feel like allowing life to basically take you on different journeys is actually really beneficial so if you are somebody that's basically seen obsessed and you happen to happen to stumble across a silent retreat a farm a hospice a care home and it takes you in a completely different direction in terms of career take it and go head first in it don't hold on to the fact that oh maybe i'm missing out on this and missing out on that i don't think that's generally the right way to go about things life is there for living especially during the pandemic we all have noticed how much time we've wasted why would you want to waste more time trying to be cool in a world where cool isn't really a currency who cares about being cool everyone that you look at nowadays in culture with maybe the exception of kanye and even him i would argue isn't the coolest guy in the world they are the opposite of cool the kardashians not really cool like people you know whatever whoever you look at on culture no, no one is cool everyone just does what they do they do to varying levels of success they play to their audience and they just keep it moving that is it but this idea of coolness and vibe and whatever it is like it doesn't exist in my opinion it really doesn't nowadays it's a completely whole different thing even the vibe thing is not a video really thing i don't even think in general i don't think kids care about that they just go to where people that look like them hang out and just kind of keep it trucking i think for the most part but maybe i'm wrong maybe i'm wrong <laughs>